you might be asking yourself why spending all of these megabit per seconds to record a video when actually you upload it to YouTube, which is a much, much less megabit per second than what even the internal codec of the Sony Alpha 7 does. Thing is, YouTubers don't upload their videos directly to YouTube. Before uploading, there is a process which is called color grading, where you take the file and move it around in terms of luminance and saturation until it matches the look you want, the style you want. Obviously, it is preferred to get the exact look you want in camera. So use proper studio lights, use the right setup, and check everything in a nice monitor so you don't need to do corrections in post. But a lot of time, mistakes happen during the scene. Maybe you are in a rush, you need to shoot it. Then you go to the computer, the footage doesn't look good, then you edit until you recover what you are recording. I want to see what happens here with the two different codecs. Let's see what happens if I switch the studio lights off. The scene is now much more complicated to edit because as you see, I'm almost in the shadow. The aquarium on my back is throwing out so much light and I get so much little light from the room that this scene needs quite a lot of correction. And with this correction, you will start to see the difference between having shot everything in ProRes and having shot everything in H.265. Hi, this is me from the editing studio. I noticed that in the video I keep on talking about ProRes against the internal codec of the camera. Now, yes, ProRes is a good codec, but it's not the only good option out there. What really matters is that you get a lot of bits, a large bit rate, so that your files are rich of information, are rich of color, are rich of what you need to edit with. And ProRes is a good option, but for example, the Ninja 5, on which I'm shooting the video right now, hosts to provide DNxHR, which is an equally good codec and very well suited for editing with Avid, I stick to ProRes because I mostly use Final Cut Pro. The extreme test, however, which I want to do now is, okay, what if I'm completely in the shadow and the only light is from the aquarium in the back? And now for the final test, I'm going really, really heavy. I have only a light in the back, a strong one, and no light in the front. So I'm completely in the shadow. I'm gonna bring this up completely in post. As long as everything is lit up correctly, there is not a big difference between having shot in ProRes or having shot at a lower bit rate with the internal codec of the camera. But the moment our lighting conditions are not ideal and a significant amount of post-processing needs to be done, that's where we see the difference between having shot with a high quality codec or a standard codec that comes with the camera with. Now ProRes LT is the lowest tier and it's only, I would say, two and a half times. I'm shooting 24 FPS compared to the file size you get with the 100 megabit per second of the camera, so it is manageable. But the moment you go to even fancier options, then you really, really are going to burn through hard drive space. Now, of course, the Sony Alpha 7 III only outputs 8p to the HDMI, not 10-bit like other cameras do. Therefore, in other situations with other hardware, it might be even more apparent shooting ProRes what it does. However, this is what I see right here. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something out of the video today. Leave me a like, subscribe if you liked the video, and I will see you in the next one.